Welcome back to a brand new Coffee Tech Break with Jan. Good to see you back on my channel today. Yeah? Much appreciated and hopefully you enjoyed my, uh, my earlier videos. Today, I think I got another great uh, video for you. So I want to take you through the out of box experience of the HP MTR on Windows Kit. Uh, so I already showed you in an earlier video the unboxing, so and you already know what comes along with this uh, with this kit. But today specifically, I would just want to run through when you install it, you walk to the first time wizard, you install the latest drivers, etc. etc. Just give you tips and tricks along the road uh, so you get a little bit of an idea. I will not show you all the cameras you can attach to it, but of course this is only the kit at the brains, the table console uh, and the computer but of course you can attach like any camera speaker and mic to this device as long as it's team certified and so i'm not going to deep dive that today specifically want to run this through and to set this up in your environment now what is also important if you're going to set it up make sure you got sort of keyboard and mouse and this will be handy in case you need to make some changes on the settings and it's just running through that first time setup wizard that you got a keyboard and a mouse by hand just can be wireless or wired uh, but as long as you got a keyboard and a mouse you should be able to save yourself and to walk through this whole setup now what i will do is i will hook it all up and jump into my demo room and so you got a little bit of an idea when you hook this up to the TV UI and what's going on and walk you through that first time setup experience. I will also attach a Teams account to it, a Teams room account, attach a basic or pro license, uh, some of the basic stuff there. So you got a little bit of an idea how easy it is to set it all up. Now let me jump in my meeting room and get started. Welcome into my coffee tech demo room and of course don't forget to take a cup of coffee in between it just sit back and relax and so in this room i will show you the exact experience walk you through tips and tricks uh, etc now let me first show you all the wiring here all right so how's the wiring set up eh? just quickly so we got the hp mtr windows at eh? the mini compute it's hooked up through the power it's hooked up here to the screen, uh, which I will show you in a, in a, in a bit, uh, sharing my coffee tech demo room. It's connected through the LAN. You could also use Wi-Fi, it has Wi-Fi built in, not recommended, but is a possibility. It's hooked up through, don't forget it, the keyboard and mouse, because it could be at the first time that the out-of-box wizard comes on the TV UI, and then it's... Yeah, makes sense to just have a keyboard and mouse available. So we're able to continue uh, the, the process. In the most optimal way, the out-of-box wizard will come automatically on the GC8. And that means then you can use this touch screen to walk through that out-of-box wizard. But I will show you how that, all, uh, how that all works. Now, the GC8 is connected through USB to the compute. And so that's important. There is a sort of cut kit available so i'll put a link right there so if you want to have a long cable or you need to integrate it in the room you can use converters from usb to cut so that is a possibility it's not part of this session today because i want to show you this out of box experience of of this device but just good to know all right here you go let me start up the HP MTR on Windows. It's booting up right now. As I said, I got the GC8 connected, computer is connected. So it should present me here something on the screen. So let's wait a bit. All right, so we see the HP mini compute now starting up. And let's see how this out of box experience goes. And this is the expected behavior. I see that the out of box wizard now transfers here to the GC8, as you can see here. So as I said, I've seen it that it can also come on the TV UI. And I mean, and then of course, then it makes sense to have the keyboard and mouse, but in the most optimal scenario, which I have right now, is that you get the out of box wizard here on the GC8. So let me show you this and walk you that through. All right, so the first option is the region. So 
let me set that I'm still in Amsterdam. We set the keyboard layout right. Do we need an additional keyboard layout? We can skip that. All right. Doing some homework. All right. Get you through the Windows 10 license agreement. Okay. So here we can register the product there. So you can fill this in. It's optional here, but I will skip that for now. Next and next. Okay. Continue the process. So what we should see now is that it will start up the Teams app. All right, if the Teams app started up correctly, what you should be able to see is the out of box wizard here on the GC8, uh, which I'm showing you right here. On the TV UI, as you can see, it shows you the timing and you got a sort of out of box theme available there. Uh, now, as the GC8 is a touch screen, we can walk it through on the device itself. In case you have it on the TV UI, it makes sense to just use a keyboard and a mouse. Another way to just fix this, so you get instead of getting the out of box wizard on the TV UI, change that back to the GC8 is going into the admin interface. But how do you do that when you are in this sort of setup? So you got the out of box wizard here, the TV UI is fixed. Well, there is a trick. And that is when using the Windows key and press that five times very quickly. Then you can break out to the underlying admin interface, you log in, and there you can change the display settings and correct that. I can show you that very quickly. So let me press it five times. Here you go. And now you see the login screen here to go into the admin part and here you go. So very, very easy. So if you need to fix some things underneath, that's always uh, a possibility. Yeah? So let me get back into the out of box wizard. And uh, what is important that uh, probably some resolutions could change, uh, but of course after, a re after a reboot, this will all fix itself. Now, let me go now into my like coffee tech room to show you at uh, this out of box wizard. So you got an idea what you need to fill in and configure. All right, welcome into my Coffee Tech demo room. So here you see what I have here on the GC8. You see that here on the big screen. And that makes much for sense so I can walk you through all the settings and the, and the tips and tricks. All right, so we gotta walk through the wizard now. We accept the license agreement. Then the next step is we need to fill in the Teams room account. And of course, then you attach your license to it, the basic or the pro. If you got dual screen, it makes sense to attach uh, the pro license. Uh. So let me fill in here a Teams room account, which I already created. All right, I fill in the password. All right, so you set the topology. That means uh, the Teams mode uh, or the Skype mode. Well, probably it's uh, Teams only. Uh. I think that makes sense uh, because Skype is not there anymore. We turn on modern authentication as basic authentication is turned off well, on most uh, tenants. So we use that. We go to the next here. We can activate voice assistance. Uh, so you get uh, Cortana support. So we can leave that on. Then we can check if you got different exchange settings. Uh, if that is different, you can uh, do that right here. You click on next. All right, so as soon as you got to it out of box wizard, it will do a restart and it will come back into the Windows MTR uh, common uh, interface. Now, what is important if the like out of box experience doesn't continue uh, because at the final step, it will ask you for uh, to attach a console. Uh, if if that is not there and the console is the GC8, uh, make sure you like Check out the USB cable, reboot the GC8, etc., because it needs to find the GC8. And this device is required to finalize uh, that, uh, that out of box wizard on your MTR Windows. Now, if that doesn't work out, uh, what you can always do is press five times the Windows key, then you can break out uh, to, uh, to the Windows admin interface, run some Windows update, uh, check the software version of uh, GC8, uh, etc. Just all the basic stuff. Uh, and then you go back into the uh, out of box wizard and then you should be able to, uh, to pass it. Now, here you go. So 
so far so good eh? most of the things went smoothly now the next step what we need to do is we need to break out to the administration interface and get everything updated so check out the windows updates i usually just many upgrade the teams app update eh? so i'm bringing it up to date now to the latest 4.16 where i will also enable that brand new interface It's not enabled by default eh? but i will show you through uh, xml how you can enable that new interface and also i will show you how to check the gca eh? to get that on the latest version just to get everything uh, at least correctly set up with the latest version so you're able to get started quickly in your environment now first off what we will do is let me go into the administration interface so here we go the standard password is ssfbs so i always recommend to to change that uh, to uh, to something else as you can see i'm running an older version here uh, of the uh, the 4.12138 is so an older version of the Teams app here on the Windows device. No problem eh, because I will do this whole upgrade process. And by the way, I will share all those applications and links and everything that I will be using. Eh. Okay, let me go into the Windows interface. And this is more some administration, eh, but it could take some time. Now, the HP MTR on Windows image is already quite new and so there's not like a lot of stuff but uh, of course I always recommend it to uh, to upgrade some of the like fixes or updates that are there so we go here to the settings we go to the Windows updates all right check out updates here you go and it should be able to find uh, some updates out there if it can't find then you got to check maybe your internet connectivity but it should be able to prompt you with some uh, with some updates and here you go so you got here some new components which are being pushed out perfect 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 yes all right and what you also see is here the usb so that's the uh, the 23 4.328 so that's the latest version for the GC8. So that is also part of the Windows updates. Eh? That's the latest version for the GC8 touch panel. Eh? So I will show you where you can check that eh? because you gotta make sure that the GC8S is at the correct version. Eh? So it is compatible with the whole MTR on Windows uh, system as a touch panel. Well, you can see that it is just doing some reboots you see sometimes uh, screen refreshing etc so just keep it running for a while uh, to make sure you got all the updates and uh, yeah, when you're finalized we're going to the next step and that is upgrading the teams app all right so during the upgrade process what you will see with the windows updates there's also bios updates coming for the hp mtr on windows so keep that in mind and that is important it's just not only the windows update but you also get bios updates now there's also updates which could be pushed out to the gc8 now when it is installed on this touch console the screen could be black for 15 to 20 minutes so keep that in mind don't unplug cables during this period that don't unplug the power because i know some people are getting nervous when they don't see activity on the gc8 just leave it as it is so i just want to try to uh, to mention all right and that's it i think i got all the updates now so uh, yeah i i forwarded i think half an hour that's okay i think i remember in the old days i had to like sit almost a day to get all those windows uh, updates eh? but uh, yeah of course the, the hp compute is like brand new hardware eh? with uh, with a fairly recent uh, image so it's just running some uh, updates bios updates etc and you're done if you've run through all the windows uh, updates the next step that i usually do is update the teams app and make sure that the teams app is the latest and greatest now how do we do that we need to go to the teams application for that i always force a manual update and i will share you some of those uh, 
links uh, where you can uh, where you can download and find all the commands uh, to uh, to do that. So let me go back into the Teams interface. So let me check the current version here, which we have now on the device. Check. All right. So as you can see now, we have a version 4.12.138. Okay, that's the version we have at the moment. So we're going to upgrade it to the 4.16. Now, how do we do that update manually? So as I said, I will share some links also in the comments on how you can, uh, can do that. But to do that, you need to break out from this profile into the admin control and eh? because otherwise I cannot update it and I need to update the uh, yeah the teams app through the yeah the Skype profile eh? because in that profile the teams app is running so how do you do that that is pressing five times to get into the profile switcher so now I'm in the Skype profile and I can log in here as an administrator but that's important you need to be in that Skype profile and then run this as an administrator because the app is running in that profile eh? so then I have a directory here where I installed some files tree and here I have my install directory so I this is my USB drive which I usually always bring with me to new demo units so I have here the latest like image for GCA to the touch panel so you can always force a manual update again I will also put some links and I will show you where you can check if you have that latest version running I got here the manual upgrade link that is through the PowerShell where you can force that update which is right here the one uh, of the 4.16 then I got the camera control app here that's a free camera control app so I will put a link here at the top where you can find that there it's freely available you just hook up your usb camera and you're able to control camera speaker mic etc then i got the skype.xml file here here i've set the new teams room interface so it's not enabled by default eh, when you install the 4.16 so you need to put skype uh, settings.xml in specific directory reboot eh, and then it will uh, read those new settings and then you will have that available so I will show you that it's really easy and I will share that uh, that yeah that skype settings.xml file I will share it also and some reference to the documentation of course in the in the comments now first off let's, right so we open up document we copy the link right we open up the command prompt as an administrator so not the powershell the command prompt right we copy and paste the URL in there and we run it. It could ask you now to run. So make sure you check it out there. So to run as an unrestricted uh, like shell script. So just wait a little bit. Right. So it will ask you for the script to run. Yes. All right. And it should start the whole upgrade process as you see right here extracting and it should give you all the information provisioning so it has the app it will install it now extracting directory all right and the operation completed successfully it should be installed now so the only thing we need to do is exit the script and do a reboot to make sure and check if we have the latest application running so let me do a restart here so the teams rule is restarted let me check what version we have now here you go we have now the latest 4.16.14 and so as you can see if you need to force it because otherwise you need to wait there because it does every night three o'clock uh, it runs those latest updates but if you don't want to wait you can always force it to get to this latest version and then it will just become part of the regular update cycle so, but at least you're now on the latest version i mean if you need to do a demo uh, or you want to set up just because you are this one day at the customer uh, you can always use those uh, those manual 
Teams app updates. All right, now let me, before I change this to the new UI, yeah, let me first show you some other tips and, uh, and tricks. Yeah. So let me go back into that administrative UI. The other thing is it could be that the TV UI and the control on the GC8 is mixed up. That could be, I've, I've seen that. Uh, that could be a possibility. Now, if you need to correct that somehow, because uh, it doesn't make sense to have that here big screen, you need to check your display settings. So let me go to the display settings here. All right. So what you will see is there's two displays here, one and two. And number two, click on identify, what you will see is the GC8, the, the smaller one. Now, it could be that it is not defined as the main display. And uh, the main display is your GC8. There's where you do the control. Now, where you can check that is all the way here below. Make this my main display and extend these displays uh, to the first one. But you got to make this the main display. That is important. So in case that is not configured, Check that out. GC8 is number two and your main display is number one. But number one is not your main display. Here, let me show you that quickly. Here, this one is not configured as main display and shouldn't be. That's only number two, the GC8. That's the first one to check. All right, the next one to check is the drivers of the GC8. So let me show you that. So we go here to the device manager, right? So where do you check if the GC8 has the latest version? You go here to the universal bus device. You go to the poly ULCC DFU runtime and then to the properties. The second tab is the driver tab. And here you can find the 23.4.328. That is the latest version right now uh, but i will put some comments in the link uh, so if there is a newer version then you can check that out on the poly support website uh, so i'll put a link in the comments where you can check if there is a newer version the latest as of today of this video uh, is the 141 but uh, yeah i can imagine uh, we got some new windows updates uh, coming etc that there will be also compatibility updates with uh, with the gc8 coming along all right, that is also something to check. And what else what I want to show you is in case the update didn't come, there is that manual package, which I showed you earlier, GC8141, which you can download from the Poly support website. And then you can always update to that later version. The other thing, which is part of my installation package is the camera control. And so you got this button where you can control the USB camera. So I also install that. So let me run that also through. It's pretty easy and pretty quick. You don't see a lot here, but you only see the camera controls here coming as an icon. And here you can configure some naming and everything. So there's no cameras at the moment attached to this device. And under settings, you can find some logging information there. So this is an important one. I will put also a link into the comments there where you can find uh, where you can find this uh, software for the camera controller. But because again, uh, this is version 1.0 as of this video, but there's also involvements uh, and like newer versions for camera control app. So just check out uh, on the Poly website. And if you go to a customer or you're installing an environment, Check that out and put that in your backpack and to, uh, to install that. Now, lastly, what I want to do is that like new interface. So how can you enable that new interface on your Teams room? Pretty easy. So I have here the Skype settings.xml. And again, I will put a reference in the comments uh, where you can find uh, uh, this or you can uh, create it. It's just one very simple line uh, which you need to create is the teams room new experience true and that's the only setting which uh, which you need to put in there and then you can enable it but you need to put this at a specific xml location which i have right here so you need to go in there 
put that Skype settings.xml file there, you reboot it, and then it, you will see that new UI. Of course, probably in newer versions, eh, this will be like a button eh, where you can just change it on the fly. But I know eh, there's some things change with this new UI. Eh, so it's like exchange on premise is not supported anymore. Eh, so I can imagine that they don't want to like roll this out by default because that will mess up a lot of eh, current uh, MTR on Windows installations. But uh, yeah, I really like this new interface and appreciate it that we got between Android and Windows and uh, you got similar user experience when you walk into those rooms. So let me copy this uh, file. All right. And now I need to walk to that directory. But to do that, I need to show hidden files. So you need to go here to view and here's the option show hidden files. I need to enable that. All right. And this will give you additional, this will give you an additional view of a certain directory. So now I can go to users. I can go to Skype. We say, okay. Then we need to go to up data. We need to go to local then we need to go to packages and here all the way below we find here the skype room directory then we have here the local state and here we copy and paste this file so again i will put in the comments i will put a link in there how you can enable that and to find this directory but yeah, I just want to show you some tips, tips and tricks uh, and, uh, and how to enable. So you just put that, drop that file there. And it, for example, if you want to set up a background, it's a similar thing. And uh, you put your, like your JPEG file in there in the right format with Skype settings.xml and you can get a background, uh, etc. So, okay, we close that. The only thing we need to do now is do a reboot. All right, here you go. So here we got the new Teams interface enabled on the MTR on Windows. And so it looks much more organized and, and friendly to the user. You got an all day agenda now. Eh? So you will be able to see the whole day instead of in the past, it was only like two or three meetings. And also on the TV UI, you were able to see your calendar just like on Android. Now you got some simple buttons there. Eh? You got a meet now. Just start an ad hoc meeting. You can do audio calls to call. You got your share button where it guides you to use uh, the casting or to use the HDMI ingest, which is by the way on the GCA test. You already have the HDMI ingest available at the table. You got your join with a meeting ID. So that is an easy way if there's no calendar invite, you can just put in the meeting ID, the password, and you're ready to go. Room controls, that is the camera controls. And so if I click on that, you can see here now the camera control application with kicks off. Now, let me attach a camera so you'll be able to see some of those settings there. Right? So attaching a camera now to the room system. So because when is it attached, as you can see, you got controls now as a user. And so I'm able to manually PTC. I'm able to add some presets. I can select other cameras if needed. And so if multiple cameras are connected to my MTR windows, I can change that here. And you can enable the tracking right here. And that gives you all the options available to your camera. And so in this case, speaker tracking, group tracking and people tracking. And people tracking is that it's able to zoom out uh, to multiple participants in the room. Really nice. And you can just select that as a user. Now, and on the more, uh, you got all the other settings available. But yeah, I think it looks really organized. Uh, but uh, as I said, just review this very carefully in your environment if you can use the 4.16 release. Now, I've added here now, of course, the E70, but for your room, you probably, if you need audio, you can add the sync family, like the sync 40 or the sync 60, or you can add a trio. And so there's multiple options with your MTR on Windows, which you are able to add. So these were all the updates and uh, looking at the Windows updates, looking at Teams app updates, 
installing the camera control app, reviewing the version of the GC8. And so what you further can do is check, of course, the uh, settings in the application, in the Teams application. For example, if you have dual monitor and you got to make sure you enable that, but that's only enabled when you have a pro license. And so make sure you have a pro license because otherwise this option will not be available. So as soon as you upgrade to the latest version and you don't have dual screen anymore, and uh, this could be the issue. You need to assign a pro license and then you can do that. If you want to do coordinated join, uh, so maybe you got a Surface Hub in that same room uh, when you want to do a uh, whiteboarding stuff, here you can enable that. Well, you can enable different themes, of course. Uh, so here you can change uh, the colors, you can change the different uh, themes that are available, and you can, of course, load your own one if needed. Uh, uh, further, you can enable Cisco WebEx and Zoom. So if you want to do a direct guest joiner and make sure you can uh, enable this is by the way available for basic and for pro license. Uh, so I just recommend to walk this through because as of my video, uh, it could already be that there are newer versions uh, available. Uh, so I always recommend to check under the settings and see if there's anything uh, you overlooked. And then, yeah, you can start enjoying your MTR on Windows. All right, so here ends the coffee tech break session for today. Hopefully you enjoyed it, gave you some guidance and tips and tricks. Uh, in summary, create your USB stick, get Teams application on it, so you can manually install it, get your GC8 software in case you want to force it to the latest uh, version, put your camera control app uh, on it uh, so you can really Prepare yourself to get started quickly with the HP MTR Windows computer. And don't forget, of course, keyboard and mouse, eh? because that is really appreciated. Also, in my case, setting up some demonstrations. Eh? So especially when the, the controls were confused with the TV UI, etc. Besides getting Teams Room account, get it proper license. If you got dual screen, you need the pro license. You want to manage it from the cloud, you need pro license, etc. So, all things you can prepare upfront before uh, starting exploring the, uh, the HP MTR on Windows. Again, hopefully, you enjoyed it. If you got any questions, just leave them in the comments eh, and I'll try to answer them as good as possible. If you like this type of video, I would say just uh, subscribe to my channel and I'm always uh, yeah, looking forward to the next one. Probably in the next one, I will dive into recovery of the MTR on Windows. Uh, but just let me know in the comments what you think uh, as the next uh, video. And of course, I will uh, try to make it all possible. Thank you for watching. And I was looking forward to see you in the next video.